Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for making space on this Easter Sunday. So today is the fourth part of this four part series. However, you can dip in. It's not like you have to follow through, you know, just so for Sally coming today, that's fine. You know, you don't, you're not going to have missed anything. You can dive into this content at any time. Um, so what we've talked about so far in practice is presence. So deepening our ability to be present and noticing our experiences and connecting with our heart. And what follows on from those, um, the more we're able to do that, the more we can deeply connect in with ourselves. So when we can connect in with ourselves and our truth, we can then work out if something is a yes or a no. You know, I've dived into the content actually without introducing myself. <laughs> so I'm just going to backtrack slightly, probably because I know you all. So that's, but you know, people might watch it on, on record. So I'm Lucinda Button. I'm a spiritual life coach for women who are ready to do the deep inner work and uncover and become the bright, beautiful, vibrant woman that they are. Um, and it'd be great if everybody does a little check in. So just check in with your name, where you are. I know you're already local, but where you are and one word, one word to describe how you're feeling or it doesn't have to be a feeling word, it can be anything. So just popcorn style, whoever wants to pop in first. I'm feeling very scattered today for some reason. Scattered, okay. Well, hopefully at the end of this, you'll be feeling more present and grounded and have your energy within you rather than scattering out because that's what happens with feeling scattered. You know, it's like all these leakages around the place with our thoughts and, you know, in too many different places. So and I think it's, I, mean, I think it's just because I'm, it's maybe because it's Easter. So we're trying to do some of the normal Easter things, um, you know, having quiche and a nice dinner and Chelsea buns and the phone calls with the family. So maybe that's why it's a scatter day because I haven't really felt like that so far. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. Well, I'm Sally. I'm in the campo between Neho and Frigiliana. And actually, I'm feeling very happy today. I've been singing. Yay! Well, I made bread this morning. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I saw the photo of your bread. It looks delicious. <laughs> a little heavy. <laughs> it showed up just underneath the post where somebody shared like Google search terms while everybody has been in lockdown and it's been everything about baking. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and then next one was your post. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, I thought I would make some for my neighbors as their Easter presents. <laughs> Very sweet. I wish I was your neighbor. <laughs> Uh, my name is Dita. I'm up on the mountain somewhere near Otiva. We're just on a crossroads of Otiva, Lenteji and Hete, so we're kind of nowhere. And uh, I've been trying to ground too. Um, Sundays are my days when I'm trying to stay away from a uh, computer as much as I can. And, uh, and so I woke up, turned off the Wi-Fi router. I don't know why I didn't do it last night. And uh, I just picked up a book, something that I hadn't done and neglected for a long time and just very slowly devoured every single word and not rushed to read it, which would be norm for me actually. And, uh, and so that was my morning and I love it. And that allows me to go slower. I think that'll be my, my keyword. Nice, yeah, slow Sunday. Perfect day to go slow. Um, thank you. So yes, what I said a moment ago was just to recap on what we've covered so far, which is about presence, noticing, becoming more embodied in our body, noticing our experience of life more deeply and connecting to our heart more deeply. And once we build those muscles and that becomes something that we experience on a deeper level we can connect in more deeply with ourselves just like we did then to work out what's going on for us but what we can do is we can connect in under the static and the kind of thoughts buzzing around and the shoulds and the um, obligations and the negative chatter we can go underneath that into what is actually true for us what are our needs what do we need moment to moment and meet those needs what's our emotional weather and then notice what our emotional weather is and then go under Again, what's under that emotional weather? Um, and our truth, we can connect into what's true for us. 
Um, and the more we're deeply able to connect in with ourselves and our truth, the more we're able to deeply connect with other people and then know where our boundaries are from truth, you know, um, where we end and someone else begins so that we can make conscious choices about what we engage in or relationships, communication, decisions, all these things. Um, so just as we are now, I invite you to close your eyes, just to kind of like practice this, place one hand over your heart and one hand over your tummy. So your womb space really, which is kind of halfway between your belly button and the top of your pubic bone. And it's not a physical thing. It's not an organ. It's more of a space in your body. Same for men, you know, it's not related to a physical womb, where, you know, whether you have or haven't got one, it makes no difference. So just kind of put one hand over there and let's just take a few deep breaths. Slowing the breath, slowing the mind. And notice how you feel. Notice what your emotional weather is. What's the, the feeling you're noticing the most? And then go deeper. What's the feeling underneath that? What's the deeper feeling? Notice how your body feels. If it feels energized or tired or, you know, whatever it might be for you. So once we really check in with our body, our emotions, we can then meet our needs more effectively because we know what our needs are, our true needs, moment to moment. So it can take a few moments to check in, to check in with ourselves from an embodied present place. So just spend a few moments and see if any messages come to you, you know, about what you're experiencing. Not, we don't have to share afterwards, this is just a practice. <sighs> and then whenever you're ready, you can just in get, open your eyes again and um, come back into the space. Just as a little practice to kind of feel what it, like, feel what it feels like to check in. Um, and so once we are checked in with our truth and ourself, I think Dita might be frozen. <clears throat> Um, let me just do something here. I'm just going to put it on circle view. So um, once we've checked in with ourselves, we can actually know what our boundaries are, and a really nice practice to do. So um, first of all, you know, you can. So let's practice our yes and our no. Actually, this is a good thing to do. So I invite you to stand up. And what you can do, just Plant your feet firmly on the ground. We've already checked in very briefly at the beginning when we shared how we were feeling a bit deeper now. The more we're in ourselves, connected to our truth, we know what our, our yes or our no is. And practicing what a yes and a no feels like, because often say a, a no can feel like a negative. But actually, it's not. A no can be really positive because it's um, our truth and our truth is always a positive thing. So saying, practicing saying our yes and our no from an embodied, powerful place, so and what and, and experiencing what it feels like. So no, no, saying that out loud, like saying no, no. Feel free to do it along with me or not, whatever. Um, and yes, yes, yes. How does that feel? So let's just um, do that, you know, for a couple of minutes together. Practice what your no feels like, what your yes feels like when you're in your body and you're not doing it from your head. You're not saying yes or no from your head. You're saying yes or no from your the, the depth of yourself, the truth of yourself. So no, like where are your edges? You know, no, feeling into the no. And then yes, yes. So feel free just to do that for a few minutes and just feel how it feels. So no, no, yes, yes. Like is the yes kind of like you welcome it into your, your life, your, you, your, your space around you, it's a yes. And a no, doesn't have to be a like really heavy pushing away no, but just a no, impact, like empowered. Because when we're connected in with our heart and our womb space, we, we are connected into our personal power, our true personal power, not our pushing power, but our anchored power. So yes and no. But yeah, if you don't want to do that now, it's fine. And it's, it's just something I, I um, invite you to practice a little bit, maybe with some nice music, try different music. 
just you know yes and no it's just a really good thing to kind of get used to saying that um yeah and if it's a maybe then that's okay too and then you can just drop in deeper and deeper and find out is it a yes or a no um yeah because often we might say yes to things when really we're a no but we're doing we're saying yes out of obligation or um shoulds shoulds you know this is a really good thing to start unpicking this is another invitation i have for you to go away after this session and if you have a journal or a piece of paper you can write one column on the left hand side a column um uh vertically can't get my words out vertically saying i should all the shoulds I should this, I should that, I should be thin, I should be rich, I should, um, you know, whatever it might be, um, be a good whatever. All the shoulds that you have in your mind computer that's running your experience of life. And then in the next column to the right, you can flip all of those. So you can write, um, uh, if I wanted, I could choose to with the thing. So you're actually choosing from an empowered place what is your blueprint to life rather than things that have been soaked in from you know being a woman in the media or from parents and society about what success is and this is a really important part of boundaries to work out what is and truth you know truth and boundaries it kind of goes together um so and then the other thing i was going to talk about today and, I'll, and we'll, we'll meditate on both of these things in a moment is bubbles so what we can do um, is we can put so it's a reiki thing so you can put yourself in bubbles so like imagine your first of all notice your body notice the shape of your body notice the edges of your body like from the top of your head down to your feet just the shape of your body you know where are the where are the where are the edges and you can imagine your body um, the space of your body filled with light so it or color it can be any color you like, white, healing light, or pink or red. Apologies if this is a bit woo woo for some. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can fill your body with that light and then you can kind of imagine an arm's uh, distance all around your whole body so that you're like you have a bubble, a bubble around you filled with this beautiful light. So it can be white or pink or whatever color, green. Um, and then that, that's kind of the edges around your space. And the edges of that bubble are um, permeable as in you choose what comes in to your energy and what what where you're giving your energy out because um, going back to the scattered thing sometimes the energy is leaking all over the place um, because of thoughts or various different things and if we can kind of like bring this bubble around us seal it all around um, and it's very thin there's a very thin uh, edge but strong um, and then we can expand that out so we can do that around our home just a, just a visualization you know imagining this bubble around our whole home you know protecting us and you can take it out further and further and further and it's just a really nice um, little tool or practice to get centered within that and to, and to you know work out where our edges are just kind of get start getting that awareness um, is there anything else I think of? day before we do a meditation um no i think i've probably pretty much covered it has anyone got any questions before we go into a meditation no this is good and i love the bubble <laughs> okay so notice where you're sitting are you comfortable do you need to move position you know, moment to moment, we can check in with ourselves and just and work out what our needs are. You know, like our need might be that we need to move position, but it might feel like, oh no, you know, there's something in us that stops us doing that for whatever reason. Maybe we want to lie down, you know, whatever it might be. Moment to moment is a real practice in this, connecting in with ourselves and working out what's our truth, what are my needs, how do I feel, you know, is it yes or no for me? So yeah, if you need to move, move. Really kind of get yourself as comfortable as you can. If you need a cushion, grab a cushion. And then gently close your eyes whenever it feels right. And first of all, notice your breathing. 
however your breathing is. Don't change it yet. Notice your chest rising and falling. Notice your inhaling and exhaling. And just notice where you're breathing. Is it more your chest? Is it more your chest area? Or are you breathing deeper into your body? With no judgment, you know, our experience in the moment is always, we always accept and it's perfect for us right now. Just tracking your breathing as you breathe in and out. And let's take in some deep breaths together in through the nose and out through the mouth to intentionally deepen and slow, up, slow down our breath. So in through the nose and out through the mouth. And notice how you cut your body relaxes on the exhale, in through the nose, slowly out through the mouth. And on the next exhale, relax your jaw. It might end up hanging open to really fully relax it. No one's watching. Really let your jaw relax, your jaw relax. We often hold so much tension in our jaw and as soon as we do that, we kind of go more into our body, away from our head. It's like our, when we're in our head, the jaw's kind of clamping us up into our head. So if we relax our jaw, maybe, you know, put your fingers on your jaw, give it a, give it a kind of little massage, you know, move it from left to right. And then carry on with some deep breathing. The next exhale, see if you can drop your shoulders. And on the next exhale, see if any noise wants to come out. So, oh, sigh out some, oh. And now notice your breathing again. Notice your chest rising and falling. And notice the difference is that if there is difference, the difference now in your breathing, are you breathing deeper into your belly? Is it slower? Just noticing. Because your breath is the way in to presence or one of the ways in and it's one of the most beautiful ways in. And as you breathe in and out now, notice on the in breath how you're breathing in oxygen and that oxygen is going from your lungs into your blood, around the whole of your body, filling up your body with life-giving oxygen from the very top of your head all the way down to the very bottom of your feet. So on every inhale, imagine your whole body being filled up with oxygen, just as best you can. And then next, as you are imagining your body filling up with oxygen, let your breathing settle back into its natural rhythm. And now imagine your whole body filled with a, a color or a light. Whatever light come or color comes first, go with that. Otherwise the mind wants to join in the party and you know and get into debates in your head. So whatever came first, fill up your body just as best you can. There's no right or wrong. Some people are very visual. Some people are more feeling. Some people are more conceptual and that's fine. But just as best you can, that light or colour is filling up your whole body from the top of your head, the whole of your head, your face, your arms, your trunk, back and front, all the way down your legs to your feet. And this colour is a nurturing, nourishing colour. It nourishes you. And now expand out. So if we're noticing the edges of our body. So notice where the edge of your body is. And then let this edge expand out. So roughly like an arm's distance away, just as best you can um, into the bubble that we talked about. So imagine that bubble around you, roughly an arm's distance away. 
surrounding the whole of your being. You're in the middle of this beautiful bubble of color or light or both. And this feeds you, this beautiful energy, light, color, it feeds you, it nourishes you, it nourishes every one of your cells. It's your space, your space that you choose what comes in and what goes out. You get to choose what enters your energy, your space, your being, your mind, your emotions. And the very center of this bubble is your womb and your heart space. Because we have three brains. We have the brain in our head, but we also have brains in our hearts and guts. Well, you know, very much physically, we have the enteric nervous system in our gut, but there's also more nerves going from our heart to our head than there are from our head to our heart, which shows that the heart has such wisdom they're both real centers, centers of energy and nervous system activity. So you're rooted in the middle of this bubble in your womb space. Sometimes it's called sacral chakra or hara and your heart. They are the center anchoring you in. And when you're anchored in, with this beautiful bubble of light around you, you get to choose, you get to choose if things are a yes or a no. Decisions, relationships, experiences, thoughts, <clears throat> you get to choose. doing this imagination um, technique of this bubble is a really good way to kind of anchor in to yourself and feel more grounded and centered. <clears throat> you can use it as protection, like if you're having worries or fears, you can put this around you with an intention of protection, protecting yourself. <clears throat> Maybe take that one really deep breath in this lovely space, in through the nose and out through the mouth to really grind this energy. And then notice your feet on the ground. Notice how you put your feeling awareness into your feet. And you notice how your feet feel and your hands and then give them a wiggle, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, maybe shake your shoulders and come back into your body and then gently open your eyes whenever it feels right, no hurry. And you can come back into the space. Oh, excuse me, I'll quite often you on after that. <clears throat> So this concludes the <laughs> you're yawning as well. I know it's catching, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> um, this concludes the four part series. Um, yeah, so going through all the things we've covered. Um, and it's a nice way to end to kind of take it deeper and into a new kind of experience rather than just being in our body. Um, and exploring when, when we are more connected in with ourselves. Um, what can be the result of that, um, you know, the you get to choose, boundaries, your yes and your no, all, all these kind of things, you know, checking in with ourselves, the more deeply we can check in with ourselves and our emotions and how our body feels, the more we can work out or tune into our truth, what our needs are, meet our needs moment to moment um, from a place of self-kindness and self-compassion and self-love. Um, so yeah, if anyone's got any questions, um, feel free or any comments any you know anything anyone wants to say about anything I loved today's bubbles I really liked that that the bubbles can be tight around you and then they can get progressively bigger and you can consider it to be something that is around not just you but your whole house and I, I, I really like the concept of that
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your family, your home, your community even, you know, it could be around the whole of Laradora. Um, you know, they But sometimes I think that I need to be selfish and just make the bubble around me. Yes. I think that as women, we don't look after ourselves first. We're always, you know, back to your I should list. Yeah. Okay, I, I've got to do the laundry and I've got to do the dishes and I've got to think about what's for dinner. And then, oh my gosh, I've got to do that. And oh, I forgot to do that. And oh, I should have done that. And the list is just constantly there. Yes. And so moment to moment, if you can catch, like, you know, I've talked about head fuck FM, excuse my French, about all the different stations we've got based on our own experience of life. Like there could be the inner slave driver, the inner critic, the inner people pleaser, whatever it might be. Everyone's got their own unique flavor depending on their life experience. But we you know once we can catch that these thoughts are driving us, stop, because this is just our, it, it's part of us and it's an amazing tool, but stop. And we don't have to be driven by that. We can stop and choose from our truth. Do I have to do this now? Do I want to do this now? And actually start, you know, really tuning into our needs um, from that, like you said, yeah, that real base of self kindness and self love rather than the shoulds, because actually these shoulds, you know, Headfuck FM stations, the shoulds, all of these things, they're not us. They're just things that have been like plopped into us from our experience of life, from society, from magazines, from parents, from teachers, from bosses, from jobs, like, you know, all these things that we've experienced in our life, they're not our truths. They can be if we want them to be. And if they resonate with us, yes, we can choose to have them as our truth, but they're not, you know, so yeah, absolutely. I found I found that I love the bubbles, like Anne said, uh, particularly that I can put it around me or I can put it around me in my house, which that's lovely. Um, but I also found that my mind kept wandering towards my core and thinking, well, is my core, should my core be strong <laughs> when you're meditating? Should it be strong rather than tight or how should my core be? So there's no there's no right or wrong and there's no should it's basically whatever your experience is in every moment whether it's tight whether it's loose however it feels that is perfect for you in that moment so it's acceptance acceptance of who you are where you are in every moment so there's no should you know as from my belief system anyway it's really about tuning into what is and accepting yeah. what is um, which will change moment to moment, day to day, you know, meditating at different times will, will change. And, and like what you said about, um, uh, yeah, I don't know if you said this or if, if, if it's a thought that came into my head to share, but you know how in meditation, when you get to that place, when you're in your body and you're noticing your breath and you're, you know, wanting to notice your thoughts and not jump on a thought cloud and jump, 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 jump. Yeah. In meditation, we do that kind of like, we go off into our thoughts and then we notice and bring ourselves back kindly rather than like, oh, I've done it again. Um, notice our thought, thought, spin off into our thoughts, bring ourselves back. And that's the, the practice in some meditation traditions, but also that's the practice in life because life can be a living meditation. That's what I've kind of been teaching so that we don't need to actually sit in meditation. We can have any part of our life as meditation and throughout the day and throughout our whole year, we'll have periods of falling asleep, waking up, falling asleep, waking up. And it's just bringing ourselves back to being awake kindly and just building that practice. And the tuning in with ourselves is a really great way to, it, it, it's building all of this kind of spiritual foundation. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and thank you, Lucinda, for all of these weekends, for the time you took to guide us through. I really appreciate it. And I, I think I speak for all. Uh, and anybody else that's going to watch the recording, right? Thanks, Dita. And thanks, Dita and Anne, for arranging it and doing the admin and the tech stuff. It's been, yeah, appreciated. So if you could, um, after this is over, if you could post it um, online again, that would be grand. And if you could send it to Ali as well, then she's updating the